Hey guys, what's up? Um, this is going to be a quick video on how to make a random number generator uh, without any repeating numbers. Um, uh, just before I do this, I want to tell you that it's not going to be using Visual Basic because my um, version of Visual Basic uh, stopped working before I made this video. So I'm going to do it in Notepad and uh, you just follow along in Visual Basic and you should get it right. Um, so basically, you want to uh, this works. Basically, you want to make a window kind of like this, uh, except you want to expand it like this, and you're going to have a list box in this area right here. So it, there's an invisible label right here. This is a label. I'll show you real quick. Uh, see that? There's a label right there. Um, so basically, you want it, you want it like set up like this. You can spread these out more if you want to, uh, and then you want a list box over here. And what's uh, what you're gonna do is um, for this first part that I'm gonna show you in Notepad, it's gonna be, oops, it's gonna be um, uh, when you're in your design phase in Visual Basic, you're gonna double click this button. And it's gonna let you type the code for the button. So this is the code for the button. There you go. Uh, set. I think it's set. Sorry, forgive me. If it's not set, then it's dim. I'm just used to a lot of different versions of Basic, so it's either set or dim. Uh, um, so you can just set random num as new random and set uh, number as integer. Okay. Next you're going to do number equals random num dot next. Uh, and then this is going to be the minimum and maximum. Your minimum and maximum is going to be minimum text box one dot text, and your maximum is going to be text box two dot text. So, so uh, that's going to set the number as uh, random number, basically uh, whatever this generates. Uh, forgive me, there's going to be a start here, start label. Um, I'm probably going to jump around just because when I code I forget some things and then I remember them later on when it starts to come together. Um, so there's the start label and then you're going to have, before you have this output to a label, you're going to put if a number, uh, sorry, if list box one dot items dot contains um, number then go to start so basically Basically, what this is so far, start is your label here. Obviously, uh, sets number as the generated number. But if listbox one dot items contains number, then it'll go back to start. You'll see what I mean by if listbox one dot items contains the number, because down here you're gonna do um, once it's generated a number. First, it has to check if it's not in there. Obviously, it's gonna start out empty. So then it's going to move on to the next step where it adds uh, and I believe that should work. Listbox one dot items dot add number. So it's going to add number to the list box. Um, and then it's going to um, label 
one, no, not label. Is it label? I think it is. Label one dot text equals a number. So then your label one dot text is going to equal number. So so far, it generates the number. If it's in the list box, then it will go back to start until it finds a number not generated in the list, uh, not already generated, because a number already generated has to be added to the list box. So, therefore, it will never repeat a number in the list box or a number already generated. And then uh, it will display the number. Um, and this is as far as I've gotten. This will work if you put it in there. The problem is, um, and I can show you, uh, you know, how to make this a little more complicated. But the problem with this is, once it's run out of numbers, the program freezes, and I have yet to figure out uh, how to keep that from happening. I've come up with a few like solutions, but um, my newest one I haven't been able to test. Right when I got on today to see if it would work, I'm confident it might work. Uh, but I haven't been able to test it at all because um, obviously Visual Basic stopped working. So I'm going to have to probably purchase a version of that or figure out a way to get another version. Um, but here, I'll just go, sh go ahead. Uh, if you use this, it will do it and it'll generate numbers without repeating them. Um, except once it's re generated all your numbers, the program will stop working, it will freeze. And you're going to probably have to go into your um, your process list and end the end the process if it will end. I don't know. I've only used it in debug. I haven't actually uh, finished the application, obviously, because I haven't been able to figure out how to stop that. From so yeah, you can end it in your processes using your task manager or uh, your running programs. Um, but let me go ahead and show you what I tried to do. Um, this is the one that didn't work. I was going to do, let's see, list box one dot items dot add number. Before it displayed, actually I think I did it before it even added the number. Let's just put it here. If uh, list box one dot items dot contains text box one two x oops So base, this didn't work because this is not a valid expression continuation. Um, so that's the only reason it didn't work. But if listbox one dot items dot contains text box one dot text two text box two dot text, meaning if it contains every number in between your minimum and maximum, then the application will exit. So because no more items will be able to be generated, uh, you can also add. So, you know, a little message box before it exits. Um, the, the thing that I was going to do to fix this, I was going to put, um, completely take this whole if-then statement out. Um, and I was going to put a 4 i equals zero to text box one dot text plus text box two dot text uh, for the entire statement. So it would be do 
I don't know what I put to do. I guess I put to do here. Except then we. No, I would probably put it here. See, this is the problem not being able to test it. <coughs> Sorry, uh, I got a phone call. I lost track of where I was, but. <coughs> So, do is here, and uh, let's see, where would I put four? Oh, wait a minute. I put four. Wait, what is it? Yeah, four. Alright, so do start. So, uh, wait a minute, two. Um, I don't know if this would work because I'm pretty sure in Visual Basic, adding a dash makes it um, a double point floating number. So that probably wouldn't work, but you can see the two ideas that I showed you. One was uh, putting, you know, what well, you saw, it. and then this one is for i equals zero to text box two. So the difference between the two, the minimum and the maximum, um, then it will run the you know, generated number, and it will loop. Let's see, where would it end? Um, we'd have to be W, uh, something like that. Um, I think loop actually has to be on the outside of application duckwood, but that wouldn't work because, um, but you can see the general idea. Um, if you want to just copy the first random number generator where it'll freeze once it's run out of numbers, uh, you can do that. And I apologize a lot. I really feel bad that I'm posting that video where I am pretty much feeding you crap code uh, because I don't know if it works or not. Um, but I'm just trying to help you out as much as I can. I haven't been able to test this new stuff to make it quit once it's run out of numbers to generate. But I do know and I have tested the uh, other piece where it um, doesn't repeat a generated number. So, like I said, you can see how that would work. It would add this number. Say I generate from 1 to 10 and it generates 1. There's a little list box here. It adds 1. And then next time I generate, um, it will cross check this number with this list before making it this uh, you know label dot text so that's how that works hope this helps if you have any questions uh, please tell me and I'll work on what the errors were that you got um, because you have visual basic and uh, you can test the code if it doesn't work um, but y you can tell that's supposed to be a subtraction, not a dash, which it reads it as. So, um, if you know the correct expression continuation that I wanted to do for the first example, then you can tell me. That would be very helpful if you told me what that correct expression continuation was, or if you knew how to make this subtract without making it think it was a double point floating number, then that would help too. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, Please leave comments and subscribe. See you next time.